Um, well, you know, we, we wrote a first draft or two drafts where we just kind of were instinctive about it and it wasn't, there wasn't um, a real plan. And then we got to a point where we said, no, let's, let's do it the more structured way. Let's do cards. Let's card this and figure out where this is going and where each character is going. You know, so we did the, uh, the index card thing, which I had never done before, and I found it incredibly valuable. Um, and um, so that, that helped a lot. Um, so from the carding, you could see, you could just look at that, that you know, helped us in, in a sort of a shorthand way to say, well, do we really need that scene? Isn't that like a repeated beat? Is that really gonna, is that doing anything? What's that pushing along? What's that, you know, what's the point of that? Is it just flavor or is that, you know, giving the, the narrative a, a kind of propulsion? So the cards were helpful and then of course when you get into the script, you know, and, and you've done your card work and you've written your draft, you can ask the same questions of it and say, well, do we really need this? Is it really moving it along? What's it doing? Maybe we do need it. Maybe it slows down this subplot and that subplot needs to be slowed down. Or maybe it doesn't have that much to do with the narrative or the plot or whatever, but it's, it's kind of important for the character and I think, I think we're going to need it to keep the sympathy for that character or something like that. So that's, you know, and then everything else, you just hope that it works, and, and once you get to the cutting room, you get a chance to do that all over again, so. It was about four and a half years. Yeah. And that's really just writing. It wasn't so much like, oh, four years, we can't get financing. It was me mostly saying, this isn't ready, this isn't ready. Well, truthfully, you don't ever really know. And um, uh, there was there was things that got tweaked, you know, up in, up until we were shooting. I mean, I, there was a couple days where I, I put up scenes and I was hearing them, um, you know, uh, coming out of people's mouths, and I was like, this this isn't right. This isn't working. And I don't think it's because I'm directing the actor wrong. I think there's something going on, you know, with the scene, and I'd have to walk away and tweak it. And um, similarly, there was two scenes that were written during production that, um, like the day before, you know, I, I woke up and I thought, oh no, if we don't have this beat in there, or if this character doesn't say this or do that, or, you know, kind of go over this territory, I think we're gonna regret it. So um, you, just, you just kind of proceed till the actors are available and, and then you have your, it's sort of an artificial start date, really, because they say they're ready and you just cram as fast as you can to do all your editing and all your, you know, rewriting. And, and um, so I, I think I went into production probably 90% confident. I knew there were some pieces that might not be right spot on, but there was enough scenes where I read them or Stuart read them and we, we laughed or we felt like, oh, that's, you know, that still feels moving to us or whatnot. And um, I, and you get to a point where you just feel like, oh, well, I can't imagine this going in another direction. This feels like the natural arc of this, of this story. Um, the budget was under four million. I think I had three and a half or something like wow. that. And as you know, we shot in Los Angeles and we shot Union, so that equaled 23 shooting days, which no. was... Wow. It was one of the least pleasant parts of this experience, but we did it. Um, well, I think the biggest you know, thing you can do for yourself, the biggest gift you can give yourself is to feel confident that the script is intact, it's lean, it works, it, it's a finished script, and that you don't have really any questions about what happens scene to scene and um, don't rely on extra time to, well, we can tweak it or we'll work it out uh, on a set because I think that's where you get really screwed on that kind of shooting schedule. Um, so that's the first thing. I would say the second thing is to make sure that you have total confidence in who you've cast to do the parts because I think working with actors and trying to figure it out with them and trying to help them learn how to do what you want them to do is a real time consumer. So those are those are two things. And no, I don't storyboard. I, I worked with a DP who understood the spirit, and which 
I was making the film in which it was written and you know what it demanded to do a 23 day shoot and we just we shot listed so we had a general blueprint for how we were going to do it but we knew that we had to be semi flexible because who knew how it was all going to play out once we set up a camera and how the day was going to go and, and whatnot and he was great at, at, um, at moving quickly and not we just didn't get overly complicated I mean it's a very um, I really love the way it looks, but it's not like a fussy film. You know, it's yeah, I mean, I, I do think so. I do. And I think that, you know, when you're under the gun like that, like you just have to be your best self and have to, you know, if you're that committed to the material and making it work, you do. You kind of, you kind of rise above. Um, so in some ways, it, it put me, you know, maybe a better filmmaker and a more, you know, clear-headed one and fast-thinking one and, and whatnot. On the other hand, there's, there were scenes that um, I think work fine, but I privately kind of regret their, their limitations and feel like, you know, I could have I done a little bit more with a few more days. So um, it was a mixed bag, but and in this case, it just worked out. And I really, again, feel like it's all about the script having been worked so hard and been thought through for so long that I just didn't have any, you know, kind of fat in there to, to mull over while I was on the set, and that saved me time. Julianne Moore was somebody that I had met a couple times over the years. I, met her probably for the first time like almost 10 years ago, eight years ago or something. And we admired each other's work. We'd said that we would like to work together. And so she was always in the back of my mind, well, this is an actor that I can actually go to. And, you know, she's um, sympathetic <laughs> to me. Yeah. Um, I, whatever. So we, at the end of the first draft, Stuart and I said, well, I think Julianne Moore could do either of these parts. Why don't we just see if she wants to do one? Um, so I sent it to her saying that, and she chose to do Jules, and um, she said it a lot in Press Y, so I'll save that. And then um, it became a real challenge to figure out who to cast next to her, because I felt like, well, I want um, you know, A-list actors, I want people that are um, gonna help us get financing, I want, I want a great actor, somebody who can really do this, and um, you know, is recognizable, but I also want somebody who's, um, believably that age and somebody who's going to be able to you know have good chemistry with Julianne and sell that idea that they're you know that they're not only partners but here are these known actresses and we know that they're straight and that they're gay in the film and blah 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 and so it took me a long time I had lists and lists and pairings and I would you know cut pictures and put them together and have conversations and ask people's opinions and it was it was a pretty, you know, neurotic experience. Um, and I held off on, on offering the part till I felt like that character was really, really ready to be filmed, that it was as developed as it, it could be and should be. And the kind of final frontier was making that character as funny as I felt like she should be. So those were the final drafts of the film were really working on her character. And um, when I got to the point where that, there was the right tone, um, you know, Annette Benning just rose to the top of the list. So, you know, I, I had a conversation with Julianne Moore. I said, you feel good about this? You've been attached to this film for so long. Is this somebody you'd like to work with? Hands down, she did. So I went out to Annette and then, you know, that it becomes a process of getting that person to commit to it. But, you know, that's really who I wanted and I was very singular minded about it. Mark Ruffalo was somebody that was always on my list as people you know that I loved and thought would do a great job. And the kids, truthfully, um, Mia Wasikowska was somebody that I had seen on In Treatment on that HBO show. I thought she was really interesting, and so uh, at that point I was running and gunning, so I just said, I'm not gonna get crazy about this one, I'm just gonna go for it and offer it to her. And um, similarly with Josh Hutcherson, he was somebody I met on an audition. I had seen very few, guys for that role and I just kind of loved him and went for it.